Well, I'll give you my take on uh, religion and Christmas and holidays and things like that. Actually, I like Christmas, but um, I could tell you this. First off, I want to preface this with George Carlin. I always liked this guy. He was always the guy that you know made the most common sense. You know, he saw right through the BS. Uh, and you know, here it comes right here, right in your face. <laughs> when it comes to BS, big time major league BS, you have to stand in awe at all time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims. Religion, no contest. George Carlin, right? Religion is like a pair of shoes. Find one that fits for you, but don't make me wear your shoes. Of course, you know, there's certain other religions out there that want to make you wear your shoes, right? And, you know, I, that's, this is one reason I kind of like Judaism, um, is they don't try to convert nobody, right? They just do their own thing. You know, <laughs> I, can, I can tell you, I'm going to tell you a couple things. I think all the religions, though, are... Um, well, I'll tell you what I think probably we should have a cult of more than anything uh, in the future here. I just didn't want to get back to, to the point. I'm actually talking about a couple things here. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of the day of your life, and he has a list of ten things he does not want you to do. And if you do not do any of these ten things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and ash and torture where he send you to suffer and burn and scream and cry forever until the end of time. But he loves you, right? He loves you and he needs money. Which, that's the one I always got at. I was like, what's the money angle? You know, it's every, it don't matter what religion is. Uh, it could be, you know, not just the three major religions, all of them. You know? It could be some somebody that worships... Uh, I don't know, gerbils. <laughs> they need money, right? It's a crock of crap. Anyway, I have as much authority as the Pope. I just don't have as many people who believe it. And, <laughs> that's, you know, that's I'm Catholic. And I can tell you right now, it's like, you know, the Pope being infallible? you got to be kidding me. Anyway, but I always say catholic, right? Catholic, catholic. I like cats. That's cool. Now, to get on to something here because I, I know I studied you know, I didn't really get deep down the rabbit hole with this stuff because you can really go really down the rabbit hole with a lot of stuff but just taking some of the basic things that are truths you know there's a lot of big monolithic structures out in the world that have been built you know eons ago thousands of years ago that we practically can't even build them today even with modern equipment if we did it would probably cost billions of dollars right like the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Sphinx, and also there's pyramids all over the world. There's in South America, there's in Mexico, there's in um, in the bottom of the ocean near Cuba, there's in the Ukraine, there's pyramids in China. You know, my thing on this, this, these were actually power stations. You know, when they had the capstones on them, they were power stations. What probably happened, according to one geologist, is that there was some kind of cataclysmic event on Earth that caused the capstone, no, excuse me, the casing stones, not the capstone, the casing stones to blow outward off the Great Pyramid of Giza and the pyramids alongside of it. And that's what Cairo was built out of. Cairo, people in, that built Cairo didn't go to the Great Pyramid of Giza and pull the casing stones off. They were actually strewn all over the desert. And that is why the people that actually built this stuff, they left. Because there was a problem. There's actually actually evidence that of construction of monolithic structures going on in South America that were stopped midstream in construction like some people moving uh, you know an 80 metric ton block you know we can't even do that kind of stuff today even with the, high, the strongest crane going so it's evidence of a higher civilization or a higher intellect and I'm going to get on to something, because I'm going to tell you, man, a lot of religion, it, it, you know, I'm going to tell you the guy that you probably should really look to the most, more than anybody, well, I'll just tell you right now, Nikola Tesla, probably you should look to him the most. He wasn't irreligious. He did believe in a creator. He did believe, you know, in a force. He, he, and he's the guy that did for the betterment of mankind more than, you know, he wasn't sitting on a pot of gold like many of these religious leaders do, right? So, now, I want to get on something here. One of the oldest, really, the oldest civilization in the world is Sumerians. And 
the Sumerians actually gave us the calendar. They gave us like seconds, minutes, hours, like in other words, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 uh, minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year. They gave us the calendar with the months. Um, and they actually said, I think they said there was um, 11 planets. They considered like the moon a planet and the sun a planet. And then we know about the nine planets, but there was a tenth planet. I think that's what it was. The nine planets, the moon, and there's a tenth planet. They said there was 11 planets. The eleventh planet is what sometimes referred to as Planet X, Nibiru, whatever the hell it is. It rotates in a long elliptical orbit way out there, much farther out than Pluto. And um, it's like it rotates, goes around every 3,600 years. So not very often, right? Now, the Sumerians knew all this stuff. In other words, how the hell did they notice? I mean, all of a sudden, nobody knew this before, and all of a sudden, boom, these guys showed up. They were taught this stuff. That's really what it was. They were taught this stuff, and according to ancient, uh, um, you know, writing in Sumeria, um, basically their whole book, you know, correlates, you know, is, is the same as Genesis, the creation in the Bible, the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, and they said humans were created from other life that was on his planet. And, you know, when you look at the Bible and you see some of the, you know, I, I'm not going to get on the details on this because I don't really study it really hard. I mean, there's Zachary stitching and stuff. You could, I don't even go down look at a lot of stuff. Now, if you don't want to believe in aliens, fine. I mean, I mean, let me say this. It was astronaut Buzz Aldrich who publicly stated, I saw in a video and also written, wrote, written, written down, he said that he knew of evidence of aliens for sure, personally. The astronaut. Now, there's a lot of top people out there in the Navy, Air Force. I mean, if you look on YouTube, you can find some of these conferences when they talk about this stuff. Hey, it's not that far stretched that we could have been genetically engineered. As a matter of fact, if you look today, um, if you have a pet, right, a cat or a dog, and say something happened with your pet or cat or dog, they can actually recreate that pet. They can clone it. And it might not be the same because it'll look the same. It'll be the same biologically. It might not be the same because of all the environmental factors of it growing up, but it'll look the same. Um, they're actually doing stuff in the U.K. right now. I saw an article that um, they were splicing human DNA in animals, trying to do hybrids. And, you know, they're talking about the ethical implications of that. Well, that's what these... And, you know, the Sumerians say the Anunnaki created us. And these Anunnaki... Their lifespan is uh, supposedly 432,000 years, roughly. So they live a damn long time. So like us, I mean, we're not even a, we're not even like a gerbil compared to these guys, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what the hell it is. Um, but you know, they created us. You know. Um, now I'm going to tell you what religion is about is, and government and all this other stuff. I mean, you can do whatever you want. I mean, that's the way I look at it. You know. I mean. I get bent out of shape when some people tell you you got to do this. I don't like that. I hate that. And that's why I like George Carlin, right? But, you know, it's sort of like if you want to believe this, believe that, fine. Do whatever the hell you want. I mean, I'm looking at this logically. It's not like I want to believe this. You know, it's actually easier to believe. It's actually easier to believe in Jesus and say he saved me and um, he forgives me and you know, he's going to take care of me, and everything's going to be fine, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a nice feeling. And that no matter what I do, if I try to get forgiveness from Jesus, I'll be fine. You know, I mean, I know that's a real nice-sounding thing. Now, that's where I like Jews better, because they actually got to atone for their sins, theoretically. I know not everybody's great. You know, I know that. But, you know, but even in Judaism, you know, the Messiah is going to be coming to us. You know what? They're talking probably, they're probably talking about a... An Anunnaki. You know that? For, for all I know. You know what I mean? It's like we're the lost puppy dogs on this freaking earth, you know? And, like, we were left here. They did the DNA thing. They used us as a bunch of workers for a while because, you know, they needed us. They had to make the uh, apes freaking smarter. And they had a, they made 
us in the image and likeness of the Anunnaki, but nowhere near like what they are. And they limited us to 120 years. So, George Carlin goes, I like people who buck the system individualist. I often warn people somewhere along the way, someone's going to tell you there's no I in team. What you should tell them is, maybe not, but there's an I in independence, individuality, and integrity. So in other words, you know, when people are trying to push this religion stuff on you, you know, don't them to go freaking take a hike, man. I mean, really. I mean, all this stuff. The government, they go, you know, to hell with them. And actually, you know, I'm getting annoyed at YouTube in a lot of ways, too, because, you know, they're so, like, I'm not even, I'd say lean Jewish, right? A lean Jewish? But, you know, I ain't waiting around for no damn Messiah. There ain't no Messiah coming. It's BS, you know? I just like the way they do a hands-on thing. It's like, we gotta improve the world, we gotta make things better for mankind. It's kind of like Nikola Tesla stuff, you know? Um... You know, the, the Messiah is like, you know, it's, it's a freaking alien, man, for crying out loud. That's what it is. I mean, you know, I like Jesus, though. I think all the red words are great. I think he was a great healer, too. I, you know, he might have been a hybrid of something else. I don't know what the hell. I mean, who the hell knows, man? That's why I look at it. I mean, everybody's got this thing. If you look in the Bible, there's so much weird stuff in there. I want to tell you. The Bible is probably like 99.9999% accurate. The weird stuff you ought to take quite literally. When they're telling you like there's beings in the center of the earth or there's giants in those days or whatever. And you know all the books of the Bible the Catholic Church don't want you to read. Read those too. Because they're hiding stuff too. You know, Not that Catholics are all bad or nothing. I'm not saying that. I'm Catholic. I like being Catholic because it's like catholic. I like cats. And, you know, the Egyptians used to say cats were a gift from the gods. Maybe they are. I don't know. These damn things are pretty smart. I like those little critters. Those guys are okay, man. So, and, and, you know, here's some evidence of, you know, I don't even want to call them aliens. It's another species. But this this may be the Anunnaki. I don't know. What the hell? I mean, that's what the Sumerians call them. Look at the size of that head. I mean, they had some serious brain power, right? They're probably smart people. Well, they're smart people if they created us. For crying out loud, right? It's pretty good, ain't it? I like that. I'm glad you created us. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good job. Good job. Now, I know... And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also tell you some stuff. I think there's some other garbage going on where there's maybe... You know, maybe there's aliens. I don't know. Because, like, they say there's five different groups or there's 12 different groups. I really don't go down a rabbit trail on this alien shit too much. But I can tell you this. There's, like, lizard ones. There's Anunnaki... There's the Nordic ones, and you got the Grace. It's like that's some of the main ones. Um, and a lot of these people in uh, the military that know a lot of shit, they still tell you. As a matter of fact, Jackie Gleason, he used to be, you know, a Florida resident. You know, just before the Baker Act. You know, the Baker Act, they would have locked him up and they would have given him meds if he would have said this shit. But he was into the paranormal, right? And what happened was uh, Richard M. Nixon said, hey, you know what, hey, I understand you're into the paranormal, like Jackie Gleason's house looked like a, you know, a flying saucer, he had a house built like a flying saucer, now, I don't get into all that shit, okay, but what Richard M. Nixon did was he took him down to a ba- Air Force base in South Florida, uh, in Homestead, and he took him down this deep uh, elevator, and he showed him some uh, alien critters on ice, say, so, hey, look at that, see that, you like that stuff, cool, you know, I ain't worried about it. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, whatever, man. Screw it, right? And, you know, some of these guys are probably benevolent. Some of them aren't. But then, you know, there's other things out there. They say there's stuff living inside the earth. You, know, you can talk about the vril. And what I'm thinking is, I'm going to get onto something here, too, because, uh, well, first, before we get onto that, early humans timeline. Now, I know there's a couple theories about this. You could say God created us. We definitely you could throw out Darwin. Darwin's crap. Actually, Darwin figured out his theory was crap as it is. And I know, you know what gets me? The religious people are less dogmatic than the atheists. I'm not an atheist, okay? But you know what I mean. Like, in other words, the, um, the atheists, man, they, they they get bent out of shape. Oh, the whole Bible's be you know it ain't. And I, I bet you most of that stuff they got with the Greeks talking about the gods and the Romans talking about the gods and 
you know, the god king of the pyramid that reigned for 5,000 years. They're probably, they're probably these alien guys, man. Or hybrids of aliens or some crap. I don't know. I'm not going to get down too deep, but, you know. But that's why you don't take religion extremely serious and try to shove your religion on other people, you know. That's why I like Jews, okay? One reason right there. Um, and, you know, the, the Anunnaki probably chose them. They said, hey, you're the chosen people. I don't know, but, you know. What they're probably waiting for is an Anunnaki to come back instead of a, you know, whatever they're thinking. But anyway, um, here you got, you know, a timeline of all these stuff, right? And all of a sudden, boom, timeline, period of Anunnaki, according to Sumerians. Boom, here's the almost, you know, mankind, the homo sapiens coming on the scene. Now, there's another theory out there that... What might have changed our DNA really fast was bombardment of cosmic radiation due to, like, um, a lowering of the magnetosphere on this Earth. In other words, you know, there's been major changes in species on this Earth all of a sudden, real quick, because of the way the Earth all of a sudden changed climate. Not due to SUVs, but a changed climate due to, like, the, the power of the sun. And, you know, that's another thing. I mean, it could be from that, too. But as far as Darwin's gradual evolution, that's total BS. It's flat-out proven. And actually, Darwin disagrees with that. So, what I'm going to tell you, though, one guy we probably should freaking take as a, almost like a religious cult hero is Nikola Tesla. This guy... I mean, somebody get bent out of shape about you know Jesus. I think is really good. Okay, um, you know, I, I know with the I don't want to get down too much trail with the blood of Jesus and his say. I don't even think he. I don't think Jesus tried to create a new religion. Okay, I think he was a Jewish guy. His disciples were Jewish. Most of his most of his followers were Jewish. He said a lot of, you know, if you're looking at the red words, he said a lot of great things, man. I mean, he's like, he's, he, he could tell he's a really good, he was a guy, he was a healer. Uh, Nikola Tesla is a healer, too. And, you know, pretty much anybody that does good in this world gets shit on. That's really what happens. That's what's screwed up about the human race. Nikola Tesla by died penniless. You know, our whole world would be radically different today. We'd be no internet, you know, nothing. Susan would be broke. You know, Susan of YouTube, you'd be broke because there'd be no Google, there'd be no YouTube, there'd be no computers because Nikola Tesla created all this stuff. He didn't get no billions of dollars. You do, right? Susan, I love you. Anyway, um, but the deal is, you know, this guy, I mean, not that he, he you know, he, you could almost make a religion about this guy for crying out loud. Maybe someday there's going to be a religion about him. I wouldn't want to make a religion about him. But in a way, you could almost say he was a real prophet for real, man. A lot better than a lot of yo-yo prophets that we have in other religions. Um, the gift of mental power comes from God, divine being. And if we concentrate our minds on that truth, we come in tune with the great power. He was religious, not in a formal sense. But he knew there was a God. He knew there was a creator. As a matter of fact, he used to use his mind to go over all the different scenarios before he'd actually do practical app. Like I, uh, Edison, he, he'd do practical app forever, have a team of people um, in New Jersey freaking working on his stuff, going back and forth till he finds something that worked, right? You know, perseverance is, uh, 90, is 99% perseverance, 1% inspiration. But with Tesla, it was inspiration. He could go over the experiments in his head. But he was tuned into the power. See? But the fact is, he didn't have a love for money. As a matter of fact, you know, there was a guy that he could have grabbed a whole bunch of money from that owed him a lot of money, and he forgave the debt on him. Of course, what happens? Government steals all this stuff, and, you know, they probably weaponize it, and probably lead us into World War III, for all I know. The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than all the previous centuries of its existence. Now, one thing I really liked that was a super cool idea from Nikola Tesla that was actually built by Georges Lukowski is that multi-wave oscillator that concentrates and brings in energies, unseen energies in and around us 
into the human body to extend life and knock out all kinds of disease and reverse age. Nikola Tesla probably already made, he didn't make that. I mean, he gave Nick George's Lukowski the idea for that. Um, actually, I think that device could be used on seeds of uh, agricultural crops before they're planted to grow much hardier crops. Um, it would work very well. I'm pretty sure of it. I don't know why people aren't doing this. I don't know. I don't know. It tells them out of people. I don't know. To tell you the truth, I think Israel is going to probably be, if they freaking start finding some, I told, you know, I'm hoping that Israel finds out about this junk. You know, with the Lukowski coil. Because at least that country would probably have the balls to do something different for their own people. Um, and I think other countries, too. Maybe Hungary would. I don't know. Hungary probably would. You know? Russia might. Might. I don't know. <laughs> United States, no. And if you knew the magnificence of 3, 6, and 9, then you would know the key to the universe. Now, you think about that. 3, 6, and 9. Look about, like, um, you know, the, the time. 60 minutes. Right, thirty days in a count in a month, usually thirty days. Right, um, sixty minutes in an hour, um, sixty seconds in a minute. That was from the Anunnaki man. He gave that stuff to the uh, Sumerians, right? And I don't know what the hell that means. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, it's three, six, and nine, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> now. What may be holding back the human race actually might be, you know, it might be this thing that they talked about, the Vril, you know, Fraulein Maria. Remember the one from the Nazis? They had the ones that were like the Sears. These broads, they they disappeared after World War II. And they never found them. I don't know. I think they went somewhere. I don't know where the hell they went. But, these, you know, they used to be, um, they were Sears. They can actually do like, um, project their mind into other areas and see what's going on. But what may be going on with the human race, because I'm going to tell you right now, you know, like back in the 1930s, you had Royal Rife, right? Royal Rife developed a device to cure cancer. Then you had Nikola Tesla gave the idea to George Lukowski to extend life, right, greatly and actually reverse age. And a lot of these things were coming out. And we also even had the violet ray, which was directly from Nick's look, Tesla, which is, you know, they labeled it a quack device later on. You know, these things were great. I mean, they were doing massive amounts of good. Then what do we have? The Great Depression, World War II, right? Today, they're rediscovering these devices, right? You know, we have the Spooky 2 Central with plasma, supposedly mimics the exact frequencies of the, um, you know, directly of the Rife machine. We also have George's Lukowski's uh, multi-wave oscillator to rediscovered in Italy. Tony and Bruno have exact plans you could buy and make them. It's not easy to do, but you could do it. Maybe an engineer can do that. Now, you know, we got ways now with that we can lengthen the telomeres. You know, it's looking like it's partially lengthening the telomeres. I've seen stuff where they used, they didn't expect it to work this good, but they're putting like a skin, skin cream with this new concoction that supposedly helps lengthen the telomeres. And they put the skin cream on a woman's face where her crow feet are by her eyes. Totally re alleviated them completely. Then we got, you know, carbon C60, buckyball, you know, carbon C60. I mean, supposedly helps greatly lengthen life. Now, next next step, World War III. I mean, a great freaking economic reset. Probably the same deal. But you know what? I, don't, I think this is being caused because there's other... I think there's another... I think there's another race of beings on this planet that might be living inside the Earth. Maybe. I mean, I've never seen one. Never talked to one. But I know there's been a lot of rumors about, you know, what the military says. Phil, uh... What's his name? Phil somebody or other. I forgot the guy's name. Not Phil Collins. Phil Snyder, <laughs> you know, the guy that did all these multiple attempts on his life because he was talking about this stuff that he was in the deep underground bases that the military has, um, you know, you know, this chick here too with this uh, Fraulein Maria, she talks about the Vril, 
Uh, you know, there might be people up there. The, there might be another race of beings. Yeah, we don't know nothing about what's under the earth. You know, it's, there's a lot of theories out there, man. It might not just all be solid, you know. Like solid as you think. It might be solid a thousand feet down, but then who the hell knows? I mean, a thousand miles down. But you don't know what the hell's below a thousand miles or 800 miles, right? It could be open, right? I don't know. Who the hell knows? Like, in other words, hell, they talk about in the Bible, might be... 100% a place, you know, in the earth, right? And it might be, it might not be, I don't know, what I, I, I can't really freaking, I don't want to go down the rabbit trail too much on this, but there might be something that literally is trying to keep the human race from getting too far ahead. You know that? And that's why you notice it, you know, all these people from these other countries are going in Sweden, because the highest intellects are in I'm going to tell you this. The Asian people got the highest intellect in general, right? They're in the Caucasians in the black race, right? And the, the uh, Native Americans are between the black race and the... I mean, that's just how it is. Actually, the Sumerians say the black people were an earlier model of the humans. But not that any of us are that great because we're all a bunch of damn gerbils compared to, like, the uh, the higher alien beings, you know, if they're existing. The ones with the big skulls. Like, uh, where the hell is that? Like these guys. Like none of us are real smart compared to these guys with the big skulls. But, you know, what could be slowing down, but, you know, obviously, <coughs> not that Caucasians are generally that super smart, but every once in a while you got this super genius. It seems to come out mainly in the Caucasian area, right? They might have some of this blood. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like Nikola Tesla, he might have had some of this blood. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this guy figured out all that crap. Um, but it's always when you're a hero, you do everything right, you get persecuted by all the jackasses around you. That's why I can't stay in the government. I don't like the cops. I don't like the freaking district attorneys, the prosecutors, big business, religious freaking yo-yos, anybody that's a professional and thinks they're high and mighty with a bunch of initials after their name, most medical doctors, and all the other nine yards. Okay? Um, but I'm not, you, obviously, I'm not going too far down a rabbit trail with this garbage. I mean, I talked about the Anunnaki, that's far enough. Sumerians, um, <laughs> that we were, we were DNA engineered, you know. I mean, I don't know. I probably, we probably were. Now, personally, I think, you know, we're on a cusp of freaking, we could probably live a thousand years old. Now, that's a long stretch away from 432,000 years from these Anunnaki guys. But that would be cool if we could live 432,000 years. I like that. <laughs> but, you know, it's probably possible. Like, I'll give you an example. You know a lobster? A dumb lobster with the claws that lives in the ocean? They never age. They never age. And they grow stuff back. You know, a claw gets chopped off, it grows back, right? The only thing that, why they die off, it's predators. They never age. They got absolutely no aging in them at all. <laughs> you know, the, it's telling you that if we had that, we, I think uh, I think the ones that actually created us, which is probably some some off off uh, species, off planet species, the ones that's really created Ameri uh, uh, people, uh, they engineered into us. I think originally they engineered into us. You know, seven hundred, eight hundred years, nine hundred years. They engineered into us uh, one hundred and twenty. And we, we do know why. It's because we don't produce, part of it is because we don't produce the vitamin C in our own body. If we actually had that capability in our DNA to produce copious amounts of vitamin C, we would, prob we would be about two and a half times longer in lifespan. Instead of living to maybe up to 120 years, we'd be 300, no problem. Like in other words, you'd be 100, you'd be like, I don't know, 38. You look like you're 38, you know? So, I mean, the way I look at it is, you know, you shouldn't live for the beyond. <laughs> you know, that's religion, right? You know, unless you figure uh, I'm going to talk to an Anunnaki and he's going to hook me up with some 432,000-year uh, lifespan. Um, you know, we should just be common sense. And I, I don't agree about going down this alien BS trail too much, too, because... 
it really gets wild, you know. But more than likely, there is other beings that have influenced this planet in the past. There's no doubt about it. And it could be around still, for all I know. Maybe that was that thing that Obama told Trump, and he looked like really nervous when he got out of the meeting when he first, right before he got to be president. Ha <laughs> ha! You know? I mean, I don't know, man. But I don't really like... I really don't like... Uh, well, religion is like a pair of shoes. Find one that fits for you, but don't make me wear your shoes. You know, to me... You know, I don't like trying to play like Nikola Tesla. I'm an engineer guy. I'm not. But that guy probably did more for us than in most of these prophets out there. Nikola Tesla in the real world. You know that? And somebody can get mad at me about saying, he, in, in a real way, he did more for us than Jesus did. You know? You're going to get mad at that, right? But think about it. I mean, Jesus gave us a code to live by, right? The red words are very good, right? I know people believe the blood of Jesus saves you, and I'm thinking, you know, when I looked at the, the Jewish Bible, or it doesn't say that, so I don't know where the hell they're coming up with that crap. Like I said, you know, I think Jesus didn't create, didn't want to create a religion, period. Now, I don't even want to talk about Muhammad, because YouTube don't like you, anybody talking about Muhammad in the least, even though... The Nazis loved Islam, but you know what? Maybe that's Nazi tube, right? That's why that shit's like that. Anyway, um, but as far as, you know, you know, this George Carlin guy, he's like, he's probably the most clear-sighted freaking, I mean, I, I think he's a prophet, for crying out loud, you know? If you mix George Carlin with Nikola Tesla, you got the truth, okay? Basically, right there. Them's my heroes, man. Right there. Okay? You gotta do it. You gotta get a little fancy, which is Nikola Tesla, but you gotta keep it down to brass tacks and uh common sense, which is George Carlin. And that's that's kinda the way I think. You know? So Merry Feast of Fatter Saturnus, you know, Merry Christmas. Feast of Saturnus. It used to be the Feast of Saturnus. Christians adopt it later so they can get more converts from the party pagans. I mean, I don't know. I like Christmas. It means like giving hope good spirit, lots of cool lights, a tree, the cats like to lay underneath the Christmas balls and stuff with Confederate flags. But, you know, hey, whatever. You know, and I can tell you, you know, people came later after these guys that really built these pyramids and they were religious yo-yos and said, yeah, I am the sun god. You know what I mean? That's what they did in Egypt. Somebody came later a scam artist, you know. He's hey, I got this big pyramid here. I wonder how I can make money off it. I'll tell people I'm the sun god. You know what they did? That's what they did later on. You know? I'm telling you, I know what they did. They're full of shit. I know my stuff, man. Look at that. Three pyramids. Oh, by the way, I think it was 8,000 years ago they used to line up with the constellation Orion. These things, these things were not built by us. No way in hell. I mean, we might have done some of the labor on them. <laughs> but as far as the technological measurements and stuff, you know, the pyramid's height to the moon is the same distance as the moon is to the moon, sun, you know, stuff like that. I mean, this, it's in square almost perfectly. It's, you know, I think these were uh, Wardenclyffe Tower type power stations like uh, Nikola Tesla design, you know when they're operational with the casing stones on them. So, the Anunnaki created us, man. <laughs> That's what happened. But who created the Anunnaki? The creator, right? Doesn't mean there's no God. That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> but, it, but, you know, it, it makes even the Jews look, it makes them look wrong, too. They're waiting for a Messiah? What Messiah? We got a Messiah coming back? Christians think that Christ is coming back again. He was the Messiah. You know, Muhammad. I don't know, whatever. Who cares, man? Right? We should concentrate on trying to improve humanity. But I think there's something going on that it's not just like a force of something behind the scenes. I think this. 
I think there's something going on that they they don't want humanity to progress. You know, it might be this vril that this uh, what's her face talked about Maria, whatever the hell it was. You know, these seers and stuff way back in the 1940s. It might be true. I don't know. Anyway. I mean, I like Jesus, too. I mean, I think he was a great healer. Great, you know, he told everybody what the right stuff to do. Um, but I disagree vehemently with uh, hiding behind, I call it that, hiding behind the blood of Jesus that your sins are forgiven and you, that's it, you're done. You don't have to do nothing. Get out of here. Get out of here. You know, that's why I lean Jewish. Like, they got to they gotta actually do something. They got to get credits, you know what I mean? They got to be real about it, you know? But I disagree with Jews too. I mean, because I don't. There ain't no Messiah coming back. What the hell are they talking about? They, what the hell are you talking? There ain't no Messiah. No Messiah. Forget about it, dude. They probably are the chosen people, chosen by the Anunnaki. <laughs> you know, if you're real Jewish blood, you you probably got some good genes in you, man. And if you think about it, you know, Jews with uh, a lot of the greatest works and uh, you know. Nobel Peace Prize and stuff and all the stuff they've done. They've done a lot of good stuff. I know you got pricks like Soros, but even the pricks are real smart pricks, right? I mean, the guys like Soros, even the guys that are bad, they know they got the power to do bad, right? You know what I mean? So, they probably are chosen, for real. But um, Nikola Tesla, he's all right, man. And he, he was never an atheist, not in the least. And neither was Einstein. Einstein wasn't an atheist either. Not in the least. None of them. But they weren't religious. <laughs> because religion is still a bullshit. Pretty much. Pretty much. You got to mix common sense with, uh, you know, highfalutin stuff like, uh, you know, like I said, a mixture of Carlin and Tesla. Is pro is, that's basically my religion. A, a mixture of Carlin and, re and Tesla. And yeah, I like Jesus, you know, I think he's a good guy and if shit. I mean, maybe he was the son of God. I mean, let me put it this way. I can't say for sure one way or the other, you know. It's like if you believe Jesus is the son of God, it's a belief. You might be wrong because that's his belief. Um, what I got is I'm open to maybe he is, maybe he ain't. That's what I look at it. Either way, I think he's really good, okay. You know, that's how I look at it, you know. So, but um, I think we got other evil forces that are out there that are against humanity, and they're not just, it's not like this abstract spirituality. I think there's like something that's actually physical that controls the banking system, the media, the war machines, all this other bullshit. And they want mankind to keep destroying itself so they can keep mankind under control. They don't want mankind to be too powerful. Because mankind's going to start figuring out a hell of a lot more than they used to know in the past. And I don't want to get abstract and say to go to a higher plane, but let's say they're going to start figuring out a lot more. Like, like you know, a lot more that's going on even on this earth itself. So... You know, and I think the government knows a lot of crap, too. They don't say nothing. They got to keep religion in place because it holds everybody in check. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what? If everybody thought like me, I think um, there'd be total anarchy because, you know, I, I accept that, hey, you know, there's a creator, fine. But as far as all the formal religious dogmatic stuff, eh, I don't know about that junk. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I was never into it. I was never into it. I mean, I'm Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I went through all the stuff, baptism, confirmation, uh, communion, communion, and confirmation. But I can tell you right now, <laughs> this, this current Pope, man, forget it, hands down. He's a New World Order operative to the max. No way in hell am I supporting this guy. He's infallible. Get out of here. But, you know, you know, I think for myself, that's what it is. They don't want you doing that, man. That's dangerous to the powers, man. And it's not, I, I don't think they're just human powers, too. There could be some other crap going on. Like, it's real shit. 
That might be real. I don't know. I never seen one. You know? <laughs> but, you know, like I said, that wacky stuff in the Bible might be alluding to real, right? Who the hell knows? Might be true.